Are you interested in managing resources such as images or translation text across multiple platforms like iOS and Android? In this video, you'll learn how to use the official solution for managing resources in Ucompose multi-platform app. Hi guys, my name is Henrik Reis. I hope you're doing well and I welcome you to a new video. Previously, the MoCo resource library was the common choice for implementing resource access across multiple platforms in Kotlin multi-platform. Although the library supports Compose multi-platform, JetBrains released a built-in API with Compose multi-platform 1.6.0 for resource sharing in the common code. Let's explore how to use this new API to share images and automatically translate strings via the default system localization. But enough of the talk, let's get right into it. Here a quick preview of the app we want to achieve. So we have one screen and also a button. As you can see, we use resource like images and also translation text here. Let's start with a fresh Kotlin multi-platform project. Go to the Kotlin multi-platform wizard and just use your yeah, project name and a project IDE which matches your use case. Also make sure to check the Android part here and also the iOS part with the shared UI. Then just click download and let's move to the fleet IDE. Inside the project, open up the compose main folder, then go to common main and into the app file. And here remove the content and just leave out the material theme. Now let's quickly create a new composable. We call it main screen, then create a new file. And here we can now create our new main screen. And maybe also uh, preview. Let's also use the material theme here. Also don't miss to add the composable uh, annotation here. Call the main content. And now let's quickly just create a small composable that contains an image we can toggle through and also some text that we might need to translate. So for that, let's have a um, column here. We want to fill the um, max screen size. Also import. Then we will have an image as well as um, text. And we also want to have a button. So what resources do we need now? We need an image as well as a description text. And the button should allow us to toggle through the available images. But before we proceed, let's come to the Compose Resources API. To use this API, we need to make sure that we include a specific dependency. Let's go to the Build Gradle Compose here. And if we now scroll down, we can see that we have here the Compose Components Resources dependency. And if you are already building a project within Compose multi-platform version, make sure that you have at least Compose version 1.6.0 in your project. So make sure that if you go into your um, libs file or libs versions tumul, that you have at least version 1.6.0 in place for your Compose uh, plugin here. Now that we have our library in place, let's start by declaring our first resources. To do so, let's go into the common main folder here. And besides the Kotlin folder, let's create a new one and we call it Compose Resources. And if you're already familiar with Android development, many concepts of this API um, will be not new to you. So for example, because we need images, we create a new folder and call it Drawable. And in this Drawable folder, we can place images. So you can place JPEGs, PNG, WebP, and even vector drawables. So in my case, I prepared two images here, one for Android, and one for Apple. And just like in Android development, we could add certain qualifiers. So for example, we could say here um, light. So the drawable folder here is only for the light mode and you could also use a dark uh, qualifier. We also want to have some descriptions for images. For that, we need to create some strings. So let's create a new folder and we call it values. And here inside, we can now add a new file and call it strings.xml. And the structure here is also just like you may know it from Android development. So the top level component um, will be here the resources and then we use string name and here we can add a name. So we have one 
um, button. Let's call it um, button switch image, for example, and we just say switch image. And then we need to want for Android as a description, so image description Android. And we also need one for Apple. So let's say here, Apple. Okay, great. We have now one file that um, delivers us some strings here or text, but we also want to use localization. How can we do that? Also by using certain qualifiers. So the values file will be the default one for the default localization. But if I might want to add a German translation, I can simply also add here an DE, which refers to the German localization. And if I now adapt this here, I can uh, say in German, build wechseln, and then I also add an DE qualifier at the end of those. And you could already see a small error um, card here in the top right corner. And that is because on the fly, the IDE tries to generate those resources. So let's proceed and use our resources. So we go into the cotton folder here and create a new file because we need a small model for our gallery um, image. Let's quickly use an enum em em class, we call it gallery image. And each of our gallery image should have an image of course and also a description. So we can simply say here image res and then we can refer to the drawable resource which comes from the compose resources um, import here and then also uh, description res. So we say um, string resource for that. We also need to import here because um, the API is still experimental. Now let's create our first enum value and that is Android. And here we now use the image res. And to access our generated resources, we can simply call the um, res object here. And then because we want to use the drawable here and then we want to use the Android Kawaii. And then we also need to provide our description. So let's do this the same just for string. So image description Android. And now we only and now the same for Apple. So dress Apple and then also the description. Great, so now let's go back to our main screen. And here we now want to um, use our gallery image to show the image and also the description text. So to do that, we need to provide a data model and that is our, um, yeah, let's say it, uh, let's call it active gallery image. And we also want to be able to um, switch our image. So we use a function here. And then also let's provide the preview data here. So active gallery image is now um, Android per default. And then we also use an empty function here. So let's start by providing the data for our first composable, that is the image. Let's first say our image should be um, always of the size 200 dp. And now we want to provide the painter. So we say painter painter resource and here we now access our active gallery image and say image res. Once again we need to import and also provide a content description. Let's keep it simple. So um, we say null here and let's fill out the text composable essentially um, the same. So here we just say uh, text and to retrieve our string resource we can say string resource. Once again, access the active gallery image, but this time we use the description res. And finally, our button. And then we want to provide the onClick function, which is our onSwitch image. And then also a text for the button where we just use our previously defined res dot also import once again. Um, and then we say string button image switch and we're good to go. Of course, we also want to be able to sw actually switch the image. So let's quickly hack together a uh, small uh, state management here. So in this case, we only say um, active gallery image, and then we use uh, remember mutable state of. And as the initial parameter, we say gallery image dot Android. Once again, we want to import, and we can also provide the type here. And now we want to call the main content from the main screen. 
So let's say here um, active gallery image is equal to active gallery image and on switch image. Um, let's keep it simple. So we say when active gallery image and then we can add um, all remaining branches. So in this case, when it's um, the Android one, we simply say Apple. And when we're in the Apple case, we can say Android. So and also sign to the active gallery image. And now if we click our button, the image should from one to another. So let's start um, the app on a device. And here you now can see that I have here the app running. And the first one is the Android image here. And I'll click on switch image. And we switch to Apple. For now quickly uh, switch to German. And go back into the app. You can see that the app automatically translates to German. So we have Apple DE, Android DE, and also build Excel. And by that you can define your resources, translate them, also use different screen sizes for images, for example, so that you have some smaller versions, some bigger versions. And as also mentioned, you can use um, dark and light mode. There are also two other folder types. One is the font folder, where you can place uh, fonts like the name applies, and also a files folder, which uh, essentially can um, take some raw files like HTML, JSON, and so on. So what do you think? Will you stick to other libraries or is the official Compose multi-platform resource API a thing you might want to consider? Let me know in the comments. And as always, I hope you had some takeaways. Like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell, and I hope to see you soon.